Hi, everybody. Uh, Carl Schilling again coming to you today and uh, in one of our Winning Edge training uh, classes. Now, today I want to talk to you more about coaching than I really want to talk to you about training. Um, there's, a, there's a slight difference between the two. I mean, training is more um, practical uh, approach of practice, doing things you already kind of know about, repetition. That's more training. Uh, and development. Uh, coaching is more kind of looking at some areas that maybe we uh, do or don't know uh, about. And uh, as such, we are working on, um, you know, facilitating education in that process. Okay. So, uh, so today I, I wanted to speak a little more about coaching. And I wanted to speak to something I think is very, very important, because as we are moving along, it's been um, it's been a ride. There's some of you who've been with me uh, a long, long time now. Uh, when I say that, I mean, you know, five or six months. There's some people who've been with this uh, who are very, very new. Now, I've come to some core issues. That's why I want to do some more coaching. But I wanted to talk to you today about aspirations and then the power of I can and, uh, and, and show you some things that I think we need to do. Okay, so in looking at we have a mission. Our mission is to eliminate all forms of financial victimization scams, fraud, predatory sales tactics, all of those things encompass financial victimization. And we do that by creating awareness and providing financial literacy education, which is always free, and at the same time, helping people attain financial independence. And that's where I think you come in, because based upon your goals, aspirations, what you really want to do is take your business, your practice to the next level. And that requires you helping people achieve financial independence. So it's a singular message. It's within the mission and a singular message. And of course, we have a strategy. The strategy provides for us the ability to show people about the greatest financial victimization in our society's amortization, okay? Due to financial victimization, we live in the wealthiest nation in the world. And at the same time, we have the highest rate of financial illiteracy. And because of that, we find that 95% of all the people reach age 65 or, or, or above, they're dead, dead broke or financially dependent. And if financially dependent is defined as they are dependent upon their family, their loved ones, their social networks, institutions, organizations, churches, and lastly, and most uh, remotely, the government. It's the last place people want to have to be dependent in their final years of life when they're supposed to be enjoying themselves and reaping the benefits of all the rewards they had from their life. Financial independence is the least they could be at that point in time. Okay, so only 5% reach financial independence. That's due to the fact of amortization being this incredible victimization and money can only do one of two things. You're either paying interest or you're earning interest and most of the people in the 95% never earn interest because they're too busy paying interest for their lifetime. And that's where Prospio comes in. So our tactics, We've got plenty of tactics. We've got tactical approaches within the strategy. There's a lot of tactical approaches. We've got the financial concierge uh, positioning. That's the whole broad thing. We've got the discussion on financial independence. We've got um, the Prospio solving that, uh, the Prospio solution. We've got the millionaire, the middle-class millionaire program that's going to become totally unique to us. It's going to be uh, totally exclusive. Um, a lot of things are coming in that arena. I'm working, I, I finished the book. I'm working on some things to make that really kind of propel. The other thing, retireless uh, sales system, which I haven't even had a chance to speak to many of you about yet because we're not maximizing Prospio yet. And then, um, you know, everything else we do. Okay, so that's the tactical. The tools are pretty simple. We've got plenty of tools. We've got, we've got all kinds of, we've got Prospio. We've got your product line, whatever it is you're doing. If, uh, if you're happy where you are, if you're not, we've got plenty of product line. We've got the strategic alliances, all the other products, the gold, the silver, you know, the other uh, financial solutions. I just read a very unique article today about uh, the use of life settlements to provide for, for um, uh, long-term care. Uh, something very interesting going on there. So that's another very unique thing. There's always something changing in our industry. We don't got to change every five minutes, no, but we got to be aware, okay? So I'm trying to make the most awareness possible for you as a financial concierge so that you could really create a seven-figure income. I don't know why I'm getting so much resistance and I'm getting so much uh, 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 pattern of people, I guess, not believing 
And that, that's what really concerns me. I don't think we've got a belief system here where people realize what's sitting in front of them. It's acres of diamonds. For those of you who know that story, I'm not going to tell that story right now, but the acres of diamonds is what we have. So all of us are busy looking elsewhere when right in front of us is acres of diamonds and we're not taking advantage of it. We've got all the support in the world. I, I don't know. I can do much more. I try to make everything. I think we've got a fully automated system. I've given you all kinds of new tools this week. I know I've bombarded you with a lot of emails, but believe me, that's all the tools necessary to make it fully automated. And at the end of this, we're looking to build a community. That's truly what we're doing. By building relationships with your clients, we're building a community. Inside that community is a core message of financial independence. All right, so that's, that's that portion of what I wanted to discuss with you today. And I wanted to go further to discuss with you, again, when we get to this belief issue that I'm, I'm concerned about, I wanted to talk to you about the power of I can. You know, when I coached, uh, you know, I coached all different levels of baseball, uh, right up to pro ball. And one thing I always did at every single level, it was always the same and, and it always worked. And it didn't make a difference from uh, peewee to minor league players. Okay. I never got to do it in the major leagues, uh, but I'm sure it would have worked there too. But, um, you know, we had a little beaver and the beaver was the, I am, I can, I will, I do because the beaver is the most diligent worker in the animal kingdom. And what we used to do with that is every week, somebody, you know, would have earned the right to carry the beaver around with them. Uh, the, I am, I can, I will, I do, but I can started it all off because the worst two words in the English language is I can't, okay? Because the minute I can't comes into focus, you won't. It's impossible. And I don't believe in the word impossible. Break that word apart and you got I am possible. But if you come from the perspective of I can't, you won't. Because you've already pre predetermined that you won't by saying I can't. So the power of I can is really kind of a, a very unique power that a lot of people overlook. They underestimate it. It's about self-improvement. I'm trying to give you every level of self-improvement humanly possible. You should take it. Believe me, it costs a lot of money. There's a lot of the things that I'm trying to provide for you that are cost-free. Normally, we talk to people about investing in themselves because that's what self-development is. You have to first invest in yourself. In order for you to help others, you need to be something yourself. And you need to fulfill who you are so that you can help a lot of others. You can't just run out and help others if you're empty. So you have to constantly be on the pursuit of self-improvement. And at the end of the day, the only thing we all have together is relationships. There's nothing else in life but relationships. It's the same with a client, whether it's a friend, whether it's a, a spouse, a child, a, re, a family relationship. All we've got are relationships, and that is what drives us. That's what makes us. That's who we are at the end of the day, our relationships. I'm going to repeat this study because I think it's really important, but back in the uh, Shelley Blotnick back in the 1960s created a long-term study. He was uh, at Harvard, and basically he did a study on Harvard MBA students who were graduating. It, there was a group of 1,500 total, and he asked them a simple deal about would they pursue their passions or would they simply pursue money, the financial gain of becoming wealthy and, and, and doing what it was, okay? Very intelligent people, Harvard graduates, so to speak, right? So 1,245 said they'd pursue money first. That was 83% of the people in the study, the vast majority, strong majority, only 255 said that they would seek their passions and their interests first and allow money to, f to follow. Well, 20 years later, there was 101 millionaires produced out of the whole 1,500, okay? And literally, the 17% produced 99% of the success because out of the group of 255, okay, uh, 100 millionaires came. Out of the group of 1245, there was only one millionaire produced. One lone millionaire came from that pool of 83% of the people who were busy pursuing money first. Now, I'm not here to preach or, or somehow tell you what you should or shouldn't do. I'm here to share with you my experience in life. I started out in an area where in my lifetime, and I'm 63 now, I chased money. 
I'll admit it right up front. I chased money. And the more I chased it, the more I repelled it. I had, I had success. I had moments of success. I had a lot of failure. I wrote a book called The Fabulous Fortunes Through Failure because of how it related to baseball and how failure relates in our life and how failure is a great thing. So I had my failures. I had a lot of them. Okay. And everything for me was a struggle, continued struggle because I chased money. Somewhere in my late 40s, early 50s, I started to recognize that maybe I ought to do what I'm teaching. Maybe I ought to allow myself to be comfortable in pursuing what I love and pursuing what I'm passionate about and pursuing uh, the things that I think are important for others. And maybe that's going to help me. So from that point, you know, money started coming in a little better. But I've had my struggles once again with money because we all face those, those things. We, we, you know, I, I lost some serious money in the downspin of the economy. So that's it. So you got to rebuild. You got to go on again. Um, I, I was at a point where financial independence was part of me. And then I got to go back and I got to restart. I got to do it again. So look, at the end of the year, at the end, I'm sorry, at the end of the cycle, we all have to be searching for the same thing that we're helping others create right now, which is financial independence. So the message of financial victimization, a couple of things on that, just so you know. Um, what you have in front of you is the ability to tell people your best interest is my only concern. And you can literally mean that with what we're talking about, what we're trying to do. You can tell people your best interest is my only concern. You don't have to be a fiduciary. You don't have to have some kind of regulatory title. You don't need those things. All you need is a true heart and a desire to tell someone and mean it that your best interest is my only concern. Plenty of people have felt the uh, pain, anger, shame, and guilt of being financially victimized. Less than 17% of all the people who suffer financial victimization will ever come forward in a minute. Talk to the police, talk to anyone. 83% never report. I won't tell anybody. Because they're shame and guilt and pain and anger. So clearly, the number one economic risk facing Americans today is financial victimization of all forms. But the biggest financial victimization after I looked at this was amortization. I mean, think about it. Financial victimization as a whole, as a whole, we, it, 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 it is responsible for $250 billion a year per, law, uh, per year in losses. And that's growing each year, okay? But the headlines are filled with financial victimization. You see it all the time. Two ex-brokers pocketed $5 million in client funds, SEC charges. New conflict of interest concerns, SEC fines RIAs for, B, for broker-dealer loans. It's all over the place. It's constant. Okay? We're in a wonderful industry, but at the same time, this, there's a lot of bad players in a wonderful industry. So we want to rise above that, I think. Okay? But $250 billion in losses. Do you know how much money there is in mortgages? That's $250 billion in financial victimization. Okay, it's chump change. $8 trillion in mortgages. $8 trillion. Now tell me that's not affecting every single American almost. And certainly tell me it is not raping and pillaging the middle class. Because it is. $8 trillion. Do we have a lot of opportunity? Uh, it's incredible. $8 trillion. There's almost $4 trillion in auto loans. Okay, student loans is well over, closing in on a trillion and a half. And credit card debt is below a trillion. And everyone talks about the massive amount of credit card debt. It's about $880 million. Okay, eight versus $8 trillion in mortgages. So um, really, maybe that's a bait and switch, get people to focus on something else. But I got to tell you, the heart, the heart and soul of the whole financial victimization is the amortization cycle of a mortgage a credit card, an auto loan, and a student loan. That enslaves somebody to pay interest for the rest of their life and never have a chance to earn interest, never. So as an advocate, we want to influence people on something they're unaware of. Listen, they're not aware of this. You can't talk to people and assume they know this. That would be a massive mistake. The problem is they're unaware. When you're unaware, you don't know what you don't know. You simply don't know. You don't even know that you don't know something when you're unaware. This is the position the people we are trying to help are in. They are unaware. Our job makes them aware. Once they become aware, they know that something they didn't know. They're now aware. It doesn't mean they did anything, but they're aware of it. 
Now, awareness means that they act actively pursued the knowledge that they now learned they didn't have, and they actually pursued and did something about it. Now they're in a state of awareness. That is us helping them with prospeo. They're in a state of awareness. That is us helping them with life insurance as another tool for financial independence. They're in a state of awareness. So you're moving people from unaware to aware to awareness. That's your job. That's your mission. And quite frankly, it should be something you love. It should be something you're passionate about. At the end of that cycle is wisdom. That simply means that people like yourself who have become from unaware to aware to awareness are now helping others actually use awareness and going and helping others become a, a, who are unaware, helping them through the cycle. That's a power of wisdom. That's where you want to go to because the power of wisdom is going to make you financially independent. Now, here's all the things that people suffer from. The reason that scams happen, and I won't go through this in length because we're really not doing this, but this is what we do on the scam side. Remember I told you we saved seven and a half million dollars for people. This is how people get involved in scams. And this is good for you as an insurance agent. Because let me tell you, plenty, if not all, insurance agents are scammed every single day. It's called lead generation. It's called, you know, new education, the newest, greatest silver magic bullet system. All these things, the prospecting system that works for you, you don't have to do anything about it. All those things, all those dollars that have come out of your pocket, unfortunately, sadly, you've been a victim, a financial victim of someone's, not fraud, but scam, someone's scheme. Because you've got to ask yourself, am I buying the goose or am I buying the eggs? If someone's selling you the golden goose, you need to run away. That, my friend, is a scam. And it's, simple, it's a simple way to just ask you yourself, if you owned the golden goose, would you ever, ever sell that goose? Regardless of what people gave you for that goose, would you sell that goose? And let's be honest, the answer is no. That goose is going to lay those golden eggs every single day. There's no way I'm letting somebody have that goose. There's not enough money in the world. So when they're selling you the goose, and guess what? The goose is the... Um, the, 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 uh, the trading system on the stock market that allows you to every day for an hour, just use our system and put up $500 and you'll make 5 million. It's the goose. Okay. It's not the eggs. The eggs would be the stocks I should invest in. Give me the list of the stocks. That would be the eggs. So in our industry, it's the prospecting program that is going to do it all for you. The magic silver bullet prospecting program. You never have to lift a finger. You only got to pay 2000 a month, 3000 a month, and they do it all for you. That's the goose. The eggs are the leads, obviously. You want to overpay for the eggs. That's one thing. But the bottom line is don't be buying the goose. Okay. So financial victimization is an economic risk of massive proportion to our society. Okay. Financial literacy education is incredibly, is a dirge. There's such a lack of financial literacy education. You could drive a Mac, you could drive a hundred Mac trucks. You could have Mac trucks lined up on a football field across the whole length of the football field and drive them all through that gap. Okay. Um, based on having the opportunity to do financial literacy. And guess what? The awareness about Prospio and the awareness of interest only being able to pay interest or earn interest, that in and of itself is a financial literacy course. It's a financial literacy education. That awareness that you're bringing to the table is financial literacy. And of course, in order for people to make smart decisions about money, you have to help them understand the psychology and things that go on and the behaviors that they display, the behaviors that everybody has, the mental accounting, confirmation bias, overconfidence, these are all things that are typical in people's decision-making about money. These are all part of financial literacy education. The psychology of money is very important in the system. Do you have to know all of this? I'm not saying you do. Do you have to spend all this time with clients doing this? No, you don't. But these are all areas that you have the opportunity as a financial concierge to make a massive difference. It's not just Prospio. We're not just in some kind of Trivesta multi-level marketing kind of game here. That's not who we are. We are professional financial concierges trying to 
make a massive difference in the lives of people in the middle class that nobody else gives a damn about. That's who we are. That's what we do. That's why we wake up every morning. That's what I want to try to transcend over to you. This is who we need to be. And guess what? There's seven figures of income on the back end of that for us. So we got to stop the excuses. They're just crutches. And, and those crutches lead to the promotion of mediocrity. I despise mediocrity. I hate it with a passion. Okay, I just hate it. Am I talking about massive competition? No, I'm not saying you got to compete and kill your mother and do it. No, I'm talking about settling for mediocrity. No, you don't want to settle for mediocrity. We live in a society where we have so many opportunities to become six-figure earners, uh, half a million a year earners, a million a year earner. I never had the opportunity to earn a million dollars a year because, well, I shouldn't say that. I, I, that's, a bad, that's bad language. I've had the opportunity to earn a million a year. I haven't done it. Let's be accountable to that. I just haven't done it. I've had plenty of opportunity. So um, we're never at a lack for opportunity. We are at a lack of our own limitations and we're at a lack of what we decide to put in front of us. So through the power of I can, I want to create an organization of millionaires because of the money. No, no, it's just the scoreboard. I mean, certainly people have a lot more reflection and you certainly have a lot more influence if you are considered to be financially independent. That's the power of it. People just tend to gravitate towards that. So we want to help people become financially independent themselves. So they have influence around others. The, medi the mediocrity, we need to go and fight mediocrity with, e with every living breath that we hold. We're living in a country that is totally merged and emerged in mediocrity and they're trying to sell it every single day we got to get away from that i'm not going to go on a, on a, on a uh, soapbox here but you know i despise mediocrity okay so for us it's greater good and that's wonderful um you know average equals good major league scouting when i was a major league scout you had a system from two to eight five was major league average which is very very good Major League average, you know, tremendous. That's good. Uh, very few players ever had a five on their five tools. You know, only the ones who are capable of playing professionally, you know, could get a five or, or, or a five and two tools. But you also heard of a five-tool player, right? That's a five-tool five, a five -tool player is someone who had Major League average or better in every one of the skill sets, which is basically, you know, running, uh, fielding, hitting, hitting for power, and, um, um, and, and basically the makeup of the player. So um, those are the five uh, levels that everything good, but you know, good has also become the enemy of great because a lot of people, they settle in at good because sometimes good is comfortable. If they want to move on to greatness, they have to, they have to go beyond that. Sometimes there's pain involved in greatness and some people don't want to pay the pain. I understand. Um, a lot of times it's unawareness. A lot of times. Uh, but sometimes it's just total, you know, um, ignoring the facts and making excuses. That's unacceptable. Unawareness is ignorance. That's, that's, that's totally acceptable. People can be ignorant because they don't know. They don't know what they don't know. Uh, but once they know and choose not to do anything about it, that's a whole nother level. That's probably a level of stupidity. So, um, so yes, good sometimes is the enemy of great. But look, we've got a system We've talked about the referral of a lifetime. You should go back and read that book over and over. That book should become part of you. You should have sat down with your list trying to fight, figure out who are the 250 people whose lives you could change, not be ashamed of it, not to be concerned of it, not to be somehow uh, judging or determining. You should have told this message to all those people so far. I mean, everyone you know should hear at least about the, the world of financial independence, okay? Um, you can judge for yourself whether they're there or not. Chances are they're, they're totally unaware. And that whole conversation is a did you know? Then you've got the testimonials, the calculator. We've got a webinar on Thursday night. We've got the, we've got the webinars for financial services professionals. We've got the conference call. We've got the Thursday night webinar. We've got conference calls and, uh, now uh, uh, in the daytime for the financial concierge. We've got a conference call Monday, Thursday, and Friday for the public. We have plenty of access for this message to be told. And I'm there for you to tell it, okay? We know that the sales generate the, the sales generate the, um, the referrals. So it's all step by step. It's that simple story. No reason to complicate it. No reason to be scared of it. No reason to think it won't work. No reason to say I can't, okay? 
people love a good story. They relate to a good story. And yes, people tend to want to believe what they hear. The internet validates this. Is there any question that people want to believe whatever they hear? And the answer is absolutely, undeniably, yes. Because people tend to read everything in the internet and believe everything they hear. How many myths, how many nonsense stories, how many uh, just total fabrications have been promoted through the, through, the, uh, through the web? Every day, there's a celebrity who died. Every day. They're not really dead, but they died. And it causes a big uproar across the whole internet because so-and-so died. And it's a fabricated story. People tend, they love to believe. It's better that we could help people believe the truth, but they still love to believe, okay? And you hear it all the time. People say, I'll believe it when I see it. And that's just not true. That's not the way it works. It's not the way the universal law works. You know, the, the truth is, you will see it when you believe it. Belief is the first step. It's not the last one. So if you believe something strong enough, you'll manifest it in front of you. If you want to believe that the sky is black and you believe it with all your heart strong enough, you will start to ultimately envision black in the sky. You will see the sky as black, literally, because you believe it so impassionately. So you'll see anything you want when you believe it. Napoleon Hill said to, you know, believe and achieve. It all starts with belief. You have to believe something before you become impassioned and go forward with it. So you want to believe and achieve. Now, the story is kind of simple. You know, the, the pattern with the work that you earn, to spend, to borrow, to pay, the 95.5, any number of ways to tell that story. So really, the next step for us as an organization, as a group, we're at a point. We're at a, we're at a, uh, we're at a crossroads, I think. We're at a, we're at a crossroads. We're going to continue to grow. I'm in this long term. I'm not leaving this unless I die. So I'm in this all the way, um, no matter what goes on, okay? I'm in this, um, and I've got some, uh, uh, I've got a, a vision for something that's much larger than just this, okay? So um, I want to grow that, and I want to take you with me. I want you to be part of it every step of the way with me. You are not working for me uh, at all. Um, you're not working under me. Um, I don't consider you're not subservient to me. Uh, you are a, a basically a partner. You are an equal partner with me in that sense. Um, we are working together. There is no um, hierarchy in that sense, okay? There really isn't uh, in my mind. So you're not paying to, to have to use testimonials. You're not paying to use the calculator. You don't have to pay for the webinars. You don't have to invest a nickel other than what you've done for yourself right now, the $300 and the uh, $69.95 a month, okay? Or the... 350 and the 99.95 a month, whatever level it was that you decided that you came in at. So that's it. You know, the 25 a month ongoing obviously is the cost for your business, but that's it. And and by now, believe me, we should be at the point where literally in the timeline that we've had, I should be able to say we've had 500 sales, honestly, honestly, and we don't. We're not even remotely close to that level of sales. All right. We're not even at a hundred. So, um, so quite frankly, you know, we are way behind the eight ball on that scale, but that's okay. I want us to be the largest and most successful selling organization inside Trivesta. That alone will come with some of its own little rewards. Okay. But beyond that, you know, obviously we want to exponentially grow your life practice and obviously we want to grow the clients on that side. That's, that's the big issue. Okay. The other issue is becoming the, the most prolific, sales organization through Prospio, that's just, you know, that's icing. That's, that's a bonus. That's because that's building. Because see, that is how we build the house. That's the foundation if we were building a house. Okay, that's the foundation. The first floor would be the life insurance. The second floor in the attic and all, you know, the, not the attic, even the, the top of the house would not be an attic. It would be a massive entertainment room. But the bottom line is up there is the upselling for everything else. All the things you tell your clients at that point. Because someone's going to tell them. Your clients are going to hear on the radio about gold and silver. Your clients are going to hear about reverse mortgages on, uh, reverse, uh, reverse mortgages on television and all over. They're going to hear about life settlements on TV and radio. They're going to hear things on uh, Jane, Jane Bryan Quinn. 
They're going to hear things from all kinds of other people, and they're going to hear all kinds of advice. They're going to read Money Magazine. They're going to get nothing but bombarded with a lot of bad information. And as a financial concierge, you're able to be there for every one of those decisions to make sure that they're safe and that they are safe harbored. That's your role. That's your goal. And my job is to support that for you. So, you know, we've, we've discussed the referral of a lifetime. We've got to continue doing that because as new people come in, they've got to get everybody, you know, uh, on page with the referral of a lifetime. But you've got to ask yourself, step back. What have you done with the referral of a lifetime since we discussed it, since you read it? Have, have you even read it? Honestly, be honest with yourself. This is not, I'm not here to hammer you. You know, this is not a, a Glenn, Gary Glenn Ross, you know, Alec Baldwin moment here about coffee is for closers. You know, it takes brass balls to sell real estate. That, that, that's not the issue here. The issue is, are you truly believing in what we're doing? Do you truly honestly understand and believe that financial independence is possibly the greatest, um, the greatest aspiration that we should have in our nation is financial independence and the richest nation in the world. Why in a world more than 5% can't reach financial independence? What does that say? Something's wrong. There's not enough uh, abundance to be promoted out there. There's plenty of abundance, but obviously there's more scarcity driven mentality. There's more people who are greedy and selfish and there's more people who don't want other people to succeed. That's not us. We want to create everything for others, okay? So, again, through growth, support, support, support. I'm, I'm trying to give you everything we can. Refer, invite, refer, invite. We got all of these places for people to just come and hear the message until you're ready to tell the message. However you want to tell it yourself, you don't need me. There'll come a point where you're not interested in coming to any of the webinars I'm doing or any of that stuff, and that's great. That's tremendous. That's, that's growth. That's, that's the ability that I had to put you out totally on your own and that you don't need any support. Tremendous. Okay. But as long as you need it, it's there. So we just want to build and help others do it all over again. We want to replicate. This is replicatable now. It, it, it's automated. Okay. It's a simple story with a simple strategy. There's easy tactics. There are rep repetitive models. Okay. And, uh, and, and of course, again, it's multiple streams of revenue. Some of it residual. Some of the residuals we traded for referrals, but that's okay because in, in and of itself, that's more. If you've got exponential referrals, the, re, the referrals become residual. And then the money from the referrals becomes that sense of residual income because the referrals are never going to end. So we just want to introduce everybody to financial independence. We want to make them, we want to get them from the unaware to the aware, and then we get paid at awareness. That's where we get paid because at aware doesn't mean they'll do anything. But that awareness means they took a decision. They made a decision. They took the first step to financial independence. So we had the rule of 250. Whether you believe it or not is the issue. You got to believe it. It's true. It really is true. It's been proven. But once again, until you believe it, it's meaningless. It's like I used to tell players all the time and, and salespeople who I worked with in sales training, I always shared with them the story of the universal law of gravity. Now, that's very interesting, of course, because, you know, you could choose not to believe gravity. You, you, you really don't have to believe gravity. Now, it's pretty reflective because it's kind of concrete because the effects of gravity are pretty evident. And if you refuse to believe it and defy gravity, you rapidly find out that gravity truly exists. But many of the other universal laws like cause and effect, you know, reaping and sowing, a lot of those universal laws, the law of compensation, a lot of them don't have the dramatic impact that gravity has. So people can choose to believe and not really feel the pain and misery of the immediate uh, uh, reality. Uh, now, they do over time. And this is why 95% are not financially independent. It's simply because they refuse to believe the law of cause and effect. They're always looking for an excuse. They always think it's somebody else's fault. There's always somebody to blame. You know, uh, people have been, um, you know, held back. People have been denied opportunity. And sadly, that's just not, that's just not reality. Okay. It's an excuse. 
And it's a it's an excuse that a lot of times can't be had the discussion because it, it gets so powerfully negative. So anyway, the, the rule of 250 exists. It, it's true. Okay. Um, I told you I can set up email campaigns if you need them. Uh, we're, we're now working on that with Jim Ashley, so I don't even need to go out to Trivesta. I could probably do it through through Jim. We've got conference calls. I set them up all during the week. Okay. There's three conference calls for um, the general public, which is prospects and clients. And there's two conference calls for financial services professionals. There's two webinars for financial services professionals that you want to recruit. And there is one webinar for the public. When the webinar for the public gets so crowded and overflowing, I'll make another night. For those of you on the West Coast, if you want me to do an 11 o'clock um, uh, Eastern, so it's 8 p.m. Pacific, I'll do it. But I'm not going to be doing it sitting in front of my computer, you know, just me doing it and constantly, you know, recording uh, things. Because I don't know, that's just not, you know, I mean, it's just not a good use of time. So if you start filling those webinars, I'll do them a hundred times a week. So, but I need people to decide that they believe in what we're doing. You need to effectively believe. You need to make the next step. Okay. Uh, I'll do anything to build your network for you. Anything. I have said over the last three weeks, the last three trainings, I have told each and every one listening, if anyone's watching these, the ones who come live, uh, you know, we're getting anywhere from six to 10 people showing up. We've got many more people in the organization, so they're not coming. And then uh, I send out the emails to everybody, and I'm not sure people are watching or listening. I don't get much feedback, and that's okay. I mean, this is reality. I'm just sharing with you the realities of where we are as an organization, what we want to accomplish, what we want to do. Okay? I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I believe in the power of I can, and I will. You know? I am, I can, I will, I do. So for me, it's going to be one step forward every single day. You're not going to see me taking two steps backwards or not going forward every single day. I will go forward every single day. I'll be there. Okay. Um, I ask people to send me 10 referrals because I would do the sales for them. You know how many people took me up on that so far? Nobody. Okay. So I know we're having a struggle with belief. That's it. There's nothing else to be said here. We're either believing in this or we're not. Now, I'm all in. I believe this. I know this will work. I've already proven that it works. In my, in my role, it works. Okay? So I know it'll work in your role, but you have to believe it. And your only responsibility in this whole automated system at this point in time is to invite and to follow up. So let me ask you, why is it that it's so hard to invite and follow up? I mean, that's it. Nothing in the middle. You, you know, maybe it's, not, maybe it's not complicated enough for you. Maybe you don't like that. Okay, now, if you want to take care of the middle yourself as well, you can. You, you don't have to. This is not like you have to invite. Okay, you can do it yourself. You don't have to invite. But for those of you who would rather just try to automate it and simplify it, you can invite and follow up. For those of you who want to take control of the whole thing, that's great. That would be wonderful. Okay. So, so today, you know, again, in my role with you today, here's the deal. Um, I believe that there is a massive opportunity facing us with a, with a middle class that is underserved and in many cases totally not served at all. Okay. Inside that middle class, there also exists a mass affluent. The mass affluent could be those who are earning from, say, 150,000, you know, household income, 150,000 upwards towards the 249.9. Okay, once you get over to 250, I think you get outside the mass affluent. All right, the mass affluent might go all the way up to 300,000. I, I don't really know how they have, um, you know, segmented everything. However, from that gap, from the 60,000 a year all the way to that, 249.9, we have something for them, okay? For those who are outside of that realm, they're not really our focus, nor should they be, because they got plenty of focus. They've got plenty of people chasing them. We don't need to jump into that pool. Now, maybe, maybe you've been kind of 
initiated to the thought process that, oh, those are the people with all the money and therefore I'll do really well if I go to those people. But you don't seem to understand, maybe you're missing the fact that everybody and their mother wants to work with those people. So those people have, you know, that is the, um, that's the queen, you know, of the ball at the high school. Every guy in the high school wanted to date her so she can pick whoever she wants to date. Okay. Now, the other girl that was in the middle of the pack, who was, you know, nice, nice looking, had a wonderful personality, didn't have a lot of popularity, you know, she was probably going to be uh, in a relationship and helped in a relationship to maybe become a starlet. Many of that, many of that's happened. But it was through the relationship that she became confident and she became, you know, who she could really become and she became a starlet. And somebody was fortunate enough to date her without any competition. So it's no different here in the world of money and finance. Uh, we can go out there and constantly pursue the, you know, the, uh, the bell of the ball and with everybody else, or we could go down to the middle class and create the client we want. Create a client who's moving towards financial independence. Create a client who could earn $2,000 extra a month and who could put that 2000 a month into an infinite banking plan. That's a pretty big case. We don't got to go find the guy that makes $400,000 a year and ask him to put it in the infinite banking plan because he's been told that by 15 others or because he's got a Merrill Lynch broker who won't let him budge or breathe. Okay. That's not who we need to reach. Do they need it? Yes, they do. They have big bone. They have big mortgages. They have big debt. They have a lot of debt. The more money you earn, let's face it, in this country, the more money you earn, the more money you spend, the more debt you're under. So yes, it's there. Now you get those on referrals. You will run into them on referrals. So a couple of elephants. You know, occasionally there's some rabbits knows an elephant. Okay, it's not usual because the rabbits and the elephants don't really get along. They don't hang out too much, right? They're not really in the same social circle, but occasionally a rabbit knows an elephant. And you got introduced to the elephant through the rabbit. But you didn't go hunting for the elephant because everybody else was out there hunting for the elephant. So we can kill a lot of rabbits in this uh, scenario, and we can build a lot of rabbits into elephants. We can make rabbits elephants in the middle class. And guess what? There is more availability than we could even say grace over. It's there. It's there every time you walk down the street, every place you go, every social event you're at, it's there. Every ball game you go to, it's there. It is all around you, everywhere you, you reach out. And guess what? They're unaware. They don't know what you know. Now, I can equate this to one thing in coaching. Let me tell you, when I was a player, I was pretty good at a sixth sense. I was a catcher. I had this sixth sense and knowledge of when, when players were going to run. And I used to do something called pitching out. So I used to be able to pitch out throughout a lot of runners. I had a very high, uh, you know, uh, uh, I had a very high statistical rate of throwing runners out. But it was because I pitched out probably 60% of the time on all of those, those runners I threw out. So um, as a coach, when I started looking over the game and managing the game, a lot of times I was, I had a bias in what I would do based on what I knew and my sixth sense. So basically I was coaching against myself because I was giving too much credit to the other coaches, assuming they knew what I knew, not giving myself enough credit for maybe knowing something they didn't know or having a sense they didn't have. So it's no different with us. Sometimes we make assumptions because we believe that people know what we know, because how could they not? Right? Because we're not special. We know what we know. We've had the opportunity to, to learn it, but we assume everybody else knows it. They don't. And that uh, assumption is a confirmation bias. And it's a bias that unfortunately we have that stops us from being successful because we make poor assumptions. And we make those assumptions from our own intellectual values and from our own intellectual standing to believe that everybody's just like us because we're only average. We couldn't possibly be better 
We don't want to also go egotistical and think we're better than anybody. So therefore, we immediately decide we don't know. They know what we know. They have to. It's all around them. They don't. Trust me when I tell you, they don't. So chances are, out of every 10 people you walk down the street and talk to about this, nine and a half of them, that half a person probably got a big problem, but nine and a half of them statistically are not going to know or be aware of what you're telling them. That's why 95% are going and ending up financially dependent. And this has gone on for 100 years. So why is it that we think or believe that any change is coming? How, how remotely knock, knuckleheaded are we? How blind are we to believe change is coming when nobody is impacting that change? So that's all I'm saying. I, I, I want us to be the ones to impact the change. Stop believing today and recognizing these people are not aware of what we're talking about. They don't know what we're talking about. We're doing them an incredible service by simply making them aware. Now, they have the choice to do something or not. We can't control that. But if we're good at what we do, certainly, once we make them aware, we should be able to influence them to do the thing they need to do for themselves. We should be good enough to do that. Now, I'm not going to judge that one way or the other. That's up to you. But I got to tell you, if you're just good enough to do three out of ten, you, you're going to be, you know, four out of ten, you're, you're, you're certainly seven figures. Okay, but even three out of ten. You're, you're on the pathway to greatness. Okay, so that's not ma magnificent numbers, okay? Just changing the mindset and awareness of 30% of, of the people you get to deal with, okay, by any stretch of the imagination, but it will ultimately achieve greatness. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically, you know, I'm just really at this point, I'm begging you. I'm begging you to recognize what's in front of you. We have acres of diamonds. We are literally swimming in them, okay? And we are ignoring it every single day. We are running down the sidewalk of life, stepping over dollars to pick up nickels. And the longer we stay there, the less opportunity we have because the time is ticking as usual and the less ability we're going to have to be financially independent ourselves. We're going to keep chasing it and chasing everything around us and chasing our tails. And meanwhile, right in front of us, all we got to do is bend over and pick up the dollars that we're stepping over. All around you is just filled with acres of diamonds. Just got to reach down and pick them up. They don't look like diamonds, so it's not easy to identify them. They're little dark pieces of coal. Of course, you got to rub them and you got to work them and you got to cut them and you got to be the one, the diamond cutter that establishes it. But think about a magnificent diamond cutter that you could be by helping one family. Just think of the difference you'd have in one family where you showed them how they could get on the road to, to financial independence. You then showed them how they could have it for free. You then showed them what they could do with the money that they were going to spend that you freed up. And then you actually showed them, hey, I can show you how to earn the additional income so that you could become a millionaire legitimately. No big phony nonsense, no fluff, no pie in the sky, no scam. I could help you how to make 2000 a month and show you what to do with that 2000 a month. And if you made more than 2000 a month, which you should, it's all yours. Do what you want with it. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, that is a pretty big deal if you did that for just one family. And amazingly, imagine if you did that for 25 families a year. And all the others, another 100, you just did the basics. You just got them on the first step. 100, 200. But 25 of them, you got into an infinite banking plan. Literally changing their life. That is a mission. That's something you can feel. That's something you can be proud of. That's a nobil that's nobility. That's a noble cause. And if you won't do it, you're doing those people a disservice by not telling them, leaving them with the darkness. They don't even have a candle to light. 
The voice heard, spread the light of candle and curse the darkness, right? These people don't even have a candle to light because they don't know. They don't know there is such a thing as a candle. They're just sitting in the darkness. Have no idea they can light a candle. You're going to be the one that makes them aware that a candle exists. So that's all I got for today. I want to thank you again. I really do appreciate it. I, you know, I love having everybody on this team and I'm looking forward to, you know, some really, really great things happening here in the coming future. Um, hopefully this will just get you a little more riled up to go out and do something about it, but please let's take that first step, man. Let's get uh, everybody on the, ba on the, on the base and get everybody in the first step to financial independence. Let's change. Let's change the paradigm of financial planning. Let's make a massive change, a shift in the country today, okay? Make a difference. Just make a difference every day. All right. You guys have a great day. And I look forward to speaking with you, you know, throughout the week. And uh, this will go up. Uh, it'll be out. I'll put it in the link for you. And uh, hopefully it helps, okay? Have a great day.